let's see what we're going to make today. Today we are crocheting these pumpkins. It's a great project for this time of year. It is also a project that is suitable for beginners as well as for those who have been crocheting a long time. And it's also a good project for using up your yarn stash. Let's see how it goes. The size of the pumpkins of course depends both on the number of stitches you use but also your yarn and hook. I was using leftover yarns so they are not the same yarn in all of these. The way we make it is simply single crochet ribbing going this way but flat and then we assemble it later and then just add a small stem. You need some yarn for the main part and then something a bit darker for the stem, just a tiny bit of that. And then you need filling, enough to fill it up. I normally get my filling by buying inexpensive pillows and taking the filling from then. And then you need a hook that goes with the yarn you have. This yarn is worsted weight and I'm using a hook size 4 millimeter, but it's important that your hook goes with your yarn. And then you need a sharp needle for this to be able to put it through here from that side to the other. The two different sizes are made exactly the same, so you can start with either. For the smaller one you need to chain 18 and for the larger one chain 25. So I'm chaining 18. Make a slip knot and chain 18. Eighteen, and for the bigger one, twenty-five. And then we start the ribbing. You start with the second from the hook, so not that one, but this one, and a single crochet. And a single crochet in each stitch. So go to the end in single crochets. I'm using American crochet terms. A single crochet in British terms is a double crochet. Here, so that gave me 17 single crochets on the row. Then for turning, chain one, turn, and now to have the, the edge completely straight, it's important that you always start in the very first stitch. And for the ribbing, we are only using the back loop. So take the back loop and a single crochet. Back loop, single crochet, and so on to the end. And when you come to the end, make sure that you make a single crochet also into the last stitch. And then again chain one and turn and start in the first one in the back loop to the end. So when you are at the end, after the second row, it can be a bit hard to get the last stitch. So make sure you get it so that you go right to the end so that your piece stays the same size all the time. If you are unsure, then count the stitches for a while in the beginning there. So counting from right from the start, you need to have 17 on every row, or if you are making a larger one so that you start it by chaining 25, then count that you always have 24. But this is how we continue now. So just the same every row and um, work for a few rows and then there's something I want to mention about counting your rows. First work a few rows. Now I have crocheted a few rows and the way you count the rows in ribbing, I have the yarn end from the start on this side so this here is two rows and then the next sort of a ridge is four, six, eight and so on. And for the smaller one, you need 28 rows, and for a larger one, 40 rows. So I'm going to make 28. 
I have 28 rows here now and then if you're making the bigger one you should have 40 and then you can cut the yarn but leave along I have left about a meter about a yard because we need to sew up gather up this here then sew up the side and gather the other side and squeeze it up it's better that you don't have to have separate pieces of yarn for those and then just finish it off pull it through and take your needle I'll sew it first so fold it into two and to keep it looking the same as elsewhere I'm also using only the back loops for sewing so this and that there my yarn is probably a bit too long and then the next one and so on like this here so sew all of that there after you have sewn that bit then we pass the yarn around it and um, pull it tight so pass the needle at the top of each of these here sort of ridges like through a couple pieces of yarn there there and so on right round and after you've gone round it tighten it really tight like that there and then go round it the second time to make sure it stays so go round it the second time then just leave the yarn there to wait and uh, fill it up as you are filling it pull it sort of wider so that it opens in the middle quite full like that there and um, then take your needle and yarn again and put the needle through the middle and get it out on the other side where did it go here you can put the yarn end also inside there and then pass the yarn round this end of it also so just the same way as in the other one through all these tops right round now I went round and then pull enough so that you close that there gap as well as that it pulls it tighter like this so that it makes the shape of a pumpkin more that there the same yarn pulls both of them and then after that pass the yarn there a couple of times at the same spot so that it doesn't come out and then finish it off yeah I did have far too much yarn <laughs> there then you can cut the yarn so it's done otherwise and then we need to make the stem in the middle for the stem take a piece of uh, a bit more than a meter a bit more than a yard so I'm in the middle of it there and I'll make a slip knot by crocheting there and then take both sides of the yarn and uh, make a stitch there chain and uh, chain a few stitches for the smaller one I'll chain eight altogether eight there's one already and for the bigger one chain ten so one two three four five six seven eight and we make it a bit thicker by going back on it 
using slip stitches, starting with the second one. So a slip stitch there and in every stitch. There and then pull the yarn through to finish it off. And then take a needle and sew it in the middle there with a few stitches there. Just a couple of stitches will hold it there. There and then finish off the yarn inside it. Here we are. So there they are. That one, that one, that and the new one. Great. So until next time.